Hi, I'm Mary Harrell for TAN Books. When you think of stigmatists, your mind probably jumps to one of the most famous ones known by everybody, right? Saint Padre Pio. But did you know that the majority of stigmatists recognized by the church are women? Did you know that the stigmata can even be invisible? Did you know that the thorn in Saint Rita's forehead is considered the stigmata? I could go on with the did you knows, but instead I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Paul Kangor, author of the new release, The Stigmatists, Their Gifts, Their Revelations, and Their Warnings. Paul is a professor of political science at Grove City College and senior director and chief academic fellow at the college's Institute for Faith and Freedom. Dr. Kangor is the author of nearly 20 books and several bestsellers, including the TAN bestseller, The Devil and Karl Marx. Paul, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, hey, thanks, Mary. Here with my favorite publishing house, Tan, Tan Books. Hey, I should have asked, are you past 20 books? Did this kick you over now? What What's the official count? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'd have to stop and count, right? But I'm sure, I'm, I think it's like 20 plus. I can tell you this. So uh, the, the, the new Reagan movie is out, which is based on one of my Reagan books. So I had to count Reagan books. <laughs> so I, so I, counted, I counted eight Reagan books. So I know I know that is a kind of a hard number, um, but overall wow. books I think I think it's twenty plus yeah but but you know it's not it's not the quantity right it's the quality that you want to aim for so in a way I mean anybody could um, you know you could probably bang out you know a book a year if you if you wanted to but it's but it's the yeah. um, the quality that counts the most so hopefully the quality is up to par with the quantity. You've got both. You've got quality, quantity. Mm. You are uh, you're edging into Dr. Peter Kraft categories with uh, mm. with a 20 plus books and a book a year. He's Good been company. averaging that yeah. for a while. Right. All right. So Paul, to jump in here, I mentioned those things in the intro, things that I, I, just a handful of the facts that you go over into the book that I had no idea about. So what was it that fascinated you about stigmatists, and how much did you know about them before launching into your research? Yeah, you know, the different things that you just mentioned there, um, I think the 90% women is very interesting, right? Uh, by the way, about 70% from Italy, although in more recent years, it's been more diverse around the world. The At one point, you know, Italy, France, and Germany represented the largest number of stigmatists. The, the vast majority have been Catholic, and I think that's no surprise. By the way, that'll probably draw a lot of kind of raised eyebrows from Protestants to be like, mm -hmm, yeah, sure, yeah, most of them, <laughs> right? But I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a former Protestant myself, but I would say to my Protestant friends, well, think about this, all right? You guys always say, you know, you Catholics, why do you have that corpus of Jesus on the cross, right? Our crosses and our churches are empty, you know, because Christ came off the cross. And we're like, yeah, we get that. Yeah, we we know he came off the cross, but but when we go in when we go into church and we go into mass, we see that suffering Jesus, right, with the marks, right, in the hands and 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 in and in the feet. So it tells us about um, you know we don't have a we don't have a hard time accepting suffering. We get it. When we go into church and we're suffering, we're not sitting there in a pew saying, "Wow, why do bad things happen to good people?" Right. Um, I didn't I didn't come into this Christianity stuff for this suffering. No, you know, we're sitting there suffering and we look up and we look at Jesus suffering the cross and we're like, ah, I get it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that those Protestants say we Catholics don't know our Bible, but isn't there something in there about pick up your cross and carry me? Right. Pick up your cross and carry it. Pick up your cross and carry it. So that's um, that's all part of it. But for me, I was always Mary. I, I was just always interested in, in stigmata. It's always fascinated me when I wasn't Catholic. And I should say I'm technically a revert rather than a convert. That's a long story. But but when I was when I was a Protestant, when I was an evangelical, I remember this would have been probably about probably in the 1990s, looking at pictures and video of Padre Pio and seeing the bleeding hands and the marks and reading about it and reading even then about all that he had went through with the skeptics and the questioners, all the medical investigations, all the psychological investigations, all the Vatican scrutiny, and 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 then finding out that he had died you know, not that long ago, 1968. And this is somebody who, you know, St. Francis, right now is the 800th anniversary of St. Francis receiving the stigmata, which was September um, 12, 24. And there's no video. 
right? There's no pictures of that. Now, there's a lot of testimony from people who lived through it. But in the case of someone like Padre Pio and some of the other stigmatists I know in the book, man, we got video. We got pictures. And you just, you know, it's undeniable. And nobody, believe me, can fake bleeding out of their hands continuously for 50 years. I mean, you just, you, just, you know, you, you, don't, you don't do that. And if you could somehow do it to yourself, you're going to you're going to die from it. You're going to have infections. You're going to have all kinds of other problems. So I, I, I've always been fascinated. This is clearly supernatural. It's clearly, clear, clearly miraculous. And then the other part of it was it said to me, I knew that so many of these stigmatists had visions. They had they had prophetic visions. They they claimed to talk to Jesus, to the Blessed Mother. Um, they had these prophetic visions. And for me, for a officially canonized saint who the church said was truly bearing these supernatural markings of Christ, right? Bestowed by Christ himself. If that guy or that gal is telling me stuff about the future or about what could happen and the second coming and the end times, I'm not just all eyes, right? I'm all ears too. I, I, I want, I want to hear about it. And I know I'm kind of going on and on here, but for me too, Mary, it was as someone fascinated by all this, then I would go online and I would read different things and I would see a lot of claims from about these different stigmatists, you know, frankly, some really sloppy Catholic websites, no attribution, not clear where they're getting the information. So I started investigating some of them myself. I, want, you know, I wanted to know, um, you know, St. Gemma Galgani, what did she really, what really happened to her? This little nun, Blessed Elena Aiello, she's one hardly anyone knows about. She died in 1961. Um, you know, look what they're claiming about her. Does she really say this, right? So I went out, got the one Italian biography of her, got a few other things. And I started doing my own investigation. And then pretty soon, I, I mean, my box is right there in the corner, corner of my office. Started filling up the, this box with books and articles that I would print out. And um, I said, I should, I should write a book on this it, it, for, for my own curiosity and peace of mind. And also I realized, boy, other people need to know about these, um, not just these gifts, but the prophetic visions, the revelations they had. So it mm -hmm. um, led, to the, led to this book. Mm -hmm. I think that's something very special about your book, Paul, that we do have many books, many biographies. Tan publishes some wonderful ones about St. Padre Pio. We have books yeah. about Eucharistic scenes. We have all sorts of books in these categories. But strangely enough, for the way that they fascinate people, the stigmatists are largely unresearched, really. Right. And that this book that puts together a compilation of research about them is kind of a rarity, I think, in Catholic publishing today. So when people are fascinated by, the, by them, and that's true, there are Hollywood movies about the stigmata. There's all sorts of, of kind of the, the fantastic, you know, the gore around the idea right, of, right. of bleeding with the wounds of Christ. Do you think that's what fascinates people? Um, do you think people have any interest in that secondary aspect of they are all, not all, mostly they are visionaries who are seeking to tell us something and have been blessed with this suffering. Do you think people are able to go beyond the, the gore or the assumed gore to get to that vision and listen to what they're actually saying to us. Yeah, and Hollywood, boy, here's another case of Hollywood be damned, right? I mean, they they treat this like it's like a like a horror flick, like a monster movie, like a scary thing, like demonic possession or something, something chilling. But um, right. this is anything but unholy. I mean, this is a very holy thing, and and this only happens to people authentically who are either, you know, saints, blessed, or probably in the process on, on, on their way to that. Right? I mean, people who've been through one of the commonalities that I found in these different stigmatists, Mary, is, is they will go through like a trial period before that, mm -hmm. as if Christ is readying them, prepping them to see if they can truly bear, you know, in their hands, in their feet, on their shoulder, maybe in their head, maybe crown of thorns, um, th these, bar these, these, these markings of Christ. So it's, um, yeah, it's nothing scary at all. It's fascinating. And it's the kind of thing that I think if we ever actually met some of these stigmatists or went in some of the room, went in a room with one of them and saw what they were going through, I imagine first it would probably be pretty alarming, right? I, I, I would, I mean, I'm sure I would be in awe of it, but this isn't somebody who's going to start you know, foaming at the mouth like the exorcist and head spinning around, right? The, this is not demonic. And one of, and one of the things that, 
the church always investigates is they want to make sure that this is not in any way a fake, that this is not in any way de demonic. Um, so they, Hollywood hasn't done a very good job with it. And, and I, say, I say this in the book, the media, I mean, the media, it's just so bad, right? It's so secular. It's so scandalous. It's so outrageous. It's just so bad. It, it, you know, there are there are claim cases today of stigmatists who are out there in the world. Alive today? Well, alive today. Claimed cases, right? And and I've seen some video on the internet. But if if the media wasn't so secular, and especially in America, focused on the trivial, nothing but politics, nothing about division, nothing but division and attacking people. I mean, why isn't the New York Times, you know, over in Italy right now, you know, looking into the case of so-and-so who claims to be bleeding from her hands, right? Why isn't CNN or CBS News over there with their cameras checking it out? And they don't even, they don't even look at it. <laughs> there's, there's not even a curiosity. It's not even like they sent a camera crew over to look into it and, and then dismissed it or even uh, sent a crew over to make fun of it. They just like completely ignore it altogether. And to me, I mean, all the stories that you're going to do as a major news organization or newspaper or, or, or cable news station over five years about this or that political candidate, and you can't take one day or one hour and all this time to go investigate so-and-so in Western Europe who people are saying is bleeding from her hands, and they don't do it. And, and and then for us, when when we want to investigate it as Catholics, we go sometimes to some really, you know, sloppy Catholic websites that aren't very reliable. Yeah, you know, the spelling isn't all correct, and and they're not edited very well. And you're wondering where does this really come from? And 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 you shake and shake you shake your head and say, where can I get accurate information on this? So I try to do a book that's engaging and readable and at the same time you know hopefully scholarly right academic enough that that people mm -hmm. can read it and rely upon it and and i will say in certain cases including claim cases today now you know here's so and so she she lives in italy or she lives in you know this country in latin america she claims this this website is saying this about her they're saying that, the critics are saying that i don't know for sure i haven't met her i haven't seen it the church hasn't ruled on it but nonetheless you know there's a couple cases and by the way just to just to give you a name for, for an example the sister agnes of japan the our lady of akita visionary yes who the, just yeah, passed the, yeah who just died and she had the incredible visions in 1973 um, about bishop against bishop, cardinal against cardinal, you know, a ball of you know, ball of fire from the sky, end times, extraordinary stuff. She was a stigmatist. She had the stigmata, and and her bishop who who authenticated the visions. I mean, these are approved visions. Our, Our Lady of Akita um, said in his approval statement that 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 she had the stigmata. She bore the wounds of Christ. She was also miraculously cured of of blindness in this process. But she, I, the stigmata didn't last for the rest of her life. I think it was during that period. And she died just a few weeks ago when we we're having this interview. And she is, did she die? Did the stigmata ever come back? I don't know. I don't know. It's another thing where, by the way, the Japanese media covered it. Uh, there's a case in Italy, a woman named Gisela Cardia. It's become a kind of a sensation in Italy. Some people don't believe her, others do believe her. Um, the Vatican ruled against her case on specific matters, although not in the stigmata. The, Mat the Vatican didn't say anything about the stigmata. She's one that's out there. That gets a lot of attention in Italy. I mean, she's on mm -hmm. like their version of Good Morning America, the Phil Donahue show, all that stuff. But in America, pff, we don't seem to care about it at all. We just care about, you know, like Kamala and Trump and Biden and whatever else we're at each other's throats about all the time. Well, how about something mm -hmm. edifying, right? How about right. something maybe genuinely supernatural? Do you guys care mm -hmm. in the secular mm -hmm. media? No, they don't. Mm. Crickets. 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 
Paul, you mentioned someone not alive today. You mentioned St. Francis of Assisi and the anniversary of him receiving the stigmata. Um, but you make an interesting point in the book that I th think I had ever really considered that while he is widely considered to be the first recorded stigmatist, there could have been a much earlier example of a saint bearing the stigmata. Tell us about him. Yeah, and in fact, so Francis is widely believed to be the first, right? So this would have been uh, early 1200s that this that this happened. So early 13th century, but Paul, Saint Paul, in the Bible in Galatians says, "Yeah, I, I bear in my hands and feet. Yeah, bear, I bear in my body the, um, the the markings of Christ." And he, so some people think that he was saying that not just metaphorically, not just symbolically. Because he says, I've been scourged, I've been shipwrecked, I've had all this different stuff happen to me. But but some believe that that he was actually saying there, suggesting, more than suggesting, saying that um, he himself actually had the, the markings of Christ in his hands and in his feet, that he might have been the first stigmatist. And interestingly, two of the visionaries that I talk about in the book, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, who is probably the most remarkable visionary in history of the church. There's a lot of tan books, um, edited volumes of, of, of her different visions. Therese Newman, also, also German and who died not long ago. I mean, she's 1960s as well. They, among their visions, they were stigmatists for many, many years. Among their visions, and they, they would be able to see things in the past. So anybody know, uh, who knows about Anne Catherine Emmerich's uh, visions knows about this. I mean, she claimed to be able to see all these scenes in the, in the life of Christ, in the life of the Blessed Mother, um, other things from other figures in the past. They both said that, yeah, Paul was the first stigmatist. They were able to like see that in their in, in their visions. Now, the church hasn't ruled on that. Church hasn't ruled on a lot of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just read through the diary of St. Faustina. St. Faustina, who's a canonized saint, first saint of the new millennium by Pope John Paul II, she said that Jesus told her, you will prepare the world for, for my second coming. Now, the church doesn't come out and say, that means that Faustina has prepared the world for a second coming. But the church has has uh, approved her as a saint. And, and, you know, the individual things and revelations that they have, the church doesn't speak to all of these. It can't on everything that every visionary said. But 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 those statements are out there and they're very, um, very interesting. <laughs> Very persuasive. Um, Paul, just for the the average Catholic in the pews every Sunday, that maybe, just like I said in the beginning, maybe the only thing they think of with a stigmatist is St. Padre Pio. Maybe they don't know any more than that. What do you think are maybe the most important or the most important points from your book that you would like the common Catholic to know and remember about stigmatists and why they are important to our faith today? Well, for one thing, there have been hundreds of them and probably I go through the few studies that have been done. So probably about four to five hundred that we know of since since the time of since the time of, of Saint of Saint Francis. So there have been more out there than we realize. Now, on the other hand, you know, considering there's 330 million Americans today, and how many people live in the world? Seven billion, eight billion, I don't even know what it is anymore. And how many billions of people who've lived through, you know, throughout time, four to five hundred is not a lot. So, so this is this is a rare gift, um, but it's not so rare that there have only been you know a couple dozen of stigmatists. Uh, they've been they've been out there, and there seems to be an increasing number in in recent years. In fact, some would say that the the few who have looked at this have said the 20th century ought to be considered the era, era of the stigmatists. Of the mm -hmm. of the seven that I dedicate chapters to in the book. Gemma Galgani, St. Gemma Galgani, she died in 1903, so early 20th century. Padre Pio died in 1968. Um, Elena Aiello died in 1961. Faustina died in 1938. So wow. four of the seven right there all died in the 20th century. So this isn't wow. something that people should shrug off as, you know, you know to quote Vladimir Lenin, medieval mildew. <laughs> right. I mean, th 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 this is this is a time when when you have you've had doctors and psychiatrists, uh, uh, teams of Vatican investigators, skeptics, you know, devil's advocates from the Vatican, cardinals, bishops, spiritual directors who who stood at the side of, of these people and watched the blood flow 
and written books about it and, and interview the people and talk to them who've gotten sworn depositions from people like Padre Pio. So the evidence here is, is, is solid, solid enough that, uh, the, that we should be taking it seriously. And we should more than just out of a curiosity, look at the, the wow, they bled from their hands and they bore the marks of Christ. What did they tell us? What did they tell us? And that's what the main thing I wanted to convey in the book. What can we learn from what they told? What warnings, not to scare anybody, right? But um, what warnings do they give us about you know, probably the times that we're living in right now? Right now. Again, the book is The Stigmatists, Their Gifts, Their Revelations, and Their Warnings. You can find it here at tanbooks.com or at your local Catholic booksellers. Paul, thanks for putting this book together. What an enormous accomplishment and a wonderful addition to the canon of books today that exist to help Catholics educate themselves about their faith. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for all you do. Mm -hmm.